Ah, you damn right. Hope everybody's having a good hump day. We know one guy who's not having a perfect hump day, and that's our guy, Jeff Ketchum. I'm Chad Hastings. Normally, you'd be hearing from Ketch right now, but we got one of these from the boss today. Finally, he hadn't been sounding great these last couple of days. He wanted to get healthy, so he wanted to sub in, and who better to sub in today than a guy who got to see a little bit of practice today, and that is Alex Dunlap of Orange Bloods. You, of course, see him in the mornings on the old fashioned. You read all the great stuff at orangebloods.com, covers great stuff for rosterwatch.com. We got the draft coming up around the corner. Alex, how are you? I was doing great, man. Just another another day of <laughs> driving an hour and 20 minutes into into town to, to watch a few periods of practice. But man, I'm glad that they're I'm glad they're letting us do it. I would I take it versus the alternative. I know that I guess this weekend coming up, Chad, I don't where you live east of town, right? You I do, east, yeah. But yeah. So um have have you ever lived close to downtown during during Texas relays? I have never been truly downtown. I used to be like Mopac and, you know, far west Mopac area. That's as close to downtown as I've ever lived. Yeah, man, it's just uh, so Friday we're not going to get any access because there's going to be Texas relays. And who knows? It might even be the 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 what's that biker rally called? Sometimes that coincides with a little it too. rot rally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sometimes that coincides, too. So, um, yeah, but, you know, it's been great to get to be out at a couple practices this week. Hopefully we'll get some more next week and starting to see some things begin to evolve man so um yeah in interesting times for sure yeah i'm interested to see uh to hear about what you got to see today and the media did get to see a little bit of it we are 24 days away from the spring game for texas and this will be their last practice of the week uh that the media got to, to take a look at so um we'll get some we'll just jump right into this alex first off from the Injury front, the good news overall has been, uh, if you're a Longhorn fan, you're knocking on wood. There hasn't been a lot of stories there. But Malik Muhammad continues to be out, but it doesn't seem super serious, and they're hoping to get him back later in the week. Uh, that's really the only thing that they they kind of got going on there. He uh, looks fine, man. Like I was, I was, kind of, I was right there watching the corners for a little while. Um, you know, and he was. It wasn't even he. They so there's a couple different ways that they handle injuries. You know, when they're out on that field, Den Denius, right? Um, whenever because on the very back side of okay, so on Denius, there's like three fields, right? There's one field that is the farthest south, and then there's a field that's in the middle that goes north to south, right? And that's sort of the main field where, where, where things happen. And then on the north side, there's sort of like a field that you got to walk up to that's kind of catty corner to the bubble, right? Yeah. Kind of runs sort of parallel to the bubble field, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you it, like if you were driving down I-35 on the on the southbound service road, you would just look over to your right. You see a field there and then you see the bubble. And that's generally where the specialists hang out. Um who knows what they do in practice? I still don't know what these guys do. I think they just kind of <laughs> trade Dungeons and Dragons cards or something. I guess they get some kicking and stuff in. But um, there's a little area back there in the back where there's like a sand pit and there's, you know, bikes, you know, stationary bikes and, um, you know, a, a little area like that. And so the two ways I've seen guys kind of act whenever they're injured is sometimes they'll be back there on that specialist field and they'll be back there like riding the bike and they'll come out and they'll work with a trainer and they'll work on their change of direction stuff like that those are generally the guys that are kind of on the recovering end of stuff and then there are some dudes i think they just go in the bubble and maybe they're just in there sort of working out those are generally the ones who have you know they're wearing slings or you know what i'm saying that like maybe something that they're in some way incapacitated and they're doing some kind of other um physical therapy in there inside the bubble and Manny Muhammad wasn't he hasn't even been like either of that either of these days on okay. Monday that, that, that was in DKR uh Wednesday today he was just kind of like he was out there with the team that was full pass today he was dressed out he went through dynamic stretch but then um whenever they just went into individual drills it was full pass today they were kind of they were they were knocking around a, a a little bit, but he was just kind of standing to the side, kind of just standing by the standing by the media and, and stuff. Um, okay. And it, like to me, he looked he looked totally fine. He was doing stuff where he was kind of jumping up and down and you know stretching and stuff like this. So I, I think Friday he'll be back. I don't know what's wrong with him. I certainly wasn't going to ask him. 
and that's not information that the, the Texas gives out, especially for something that seems so minor. But uh, I, Sark said, I believe, on after the Monday practice that they were expecting him back either today or Friday. So it looks like it'll be Friday, but I wouldn't. I tell people not to worry about that guy. He looks to, he looks totally fine to me. We already got folks in the chat, and uh, Guy says, whoever said best news is no news must have been talking about injuries. Exactly, Guy. It's one of the best versions of no news is good news. Uh, Alan reminding everybody to smash that like button. Yes, remember, uh, if you're going to throw in some hook em emojis, just like for every hook em emoji. That's what you do. Actually, you can only like each video one time, so you know what I mean. Uh, but we appreciate all those emojis. We appreciate your likes. Subscribe to the channel and then get those notifications as well. All right, Alex, in the limited time you guys got to watch practice today, uh, you you have developed a reputation of being able to f- get a lot out of a little time. That's why I, that's why I love reading your through your reports and stuff. So I grew up going to practices, Chad. It's like I I, I love practice, man. I talk yeah, to these could- coaches and. You know, these coaches, they like practice more than they like games. I'm, I'm not necessarily the same way, man, but I got I got pawned off with my aunt and uncle when I had my my cousin playing varsity at Westlake. I spent, you know, spent, I spent my whole life going to these practices, man. I love them. So, yeah, a yeah, you know, little, tell, little bit of a practice that, whisperer. Yeah, no, and I think the people can tell that as well. Um, so uh, what's on the top of your mind today? Give me, a, give me a, a starter here. I won't send you in any direction. I'll let you start it. Yeah, I mean, it's just the offensive line stuff. I think today is just con- it's continued from Monday. So here's where we are with it. On Monday, it was a situation where I began to notice that Hayden Connor was working out at center, and um, I didn't know exactly what that meant. There were a lot of ways that that could go. Right, Chad? It's like the first thing you think to yourself is, okay, are they cross training him at center? Because they think that Connor Robertson, who would be the number two behind him, is not somebody they think is ready in case majors were to get hurt. And we got to get Connor ready at center because we can't have something like happen versus Oklahoma last year where Connor Robertson had a rough game after Jake Majors went out like in the first series, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do we are we just gonna work a bunch with Connor at center? Because Lord knows he's played enough left guard, right? Uh, um Right. You know, are we just trying to get him cross trained? Right. right. And Can so yeah. on 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 Monday, that's what I kind of thought was going to be happening. But center was all he played during the time that I was there. So that made me think like, well, could there be something going on? And w- as I was watching it with the first group, it was hard to tell because they were only doing two man drills. So with the, the, the offensive line, when you run zone inside zone or outside zone, A lot of the time, I'm trying to say this in the most simple way, a lot of the time, two offensive linemen have to work in tandem on what's called a combo block, right? To where they're going to combo off of a – say that there's one guy in between two guys. He's in a three technique, right? He's between a tackle and a guard. And you got to figure out, okay, who's going to get leverage on this guy? Once he does get leverage, which guy is going to go second level and try and cut off the linebacker, right? So – you can kind of tell who the first group is and who the second group is based on who these tandems are of, of these players. Right. Okay. Um, For, for me, from everything that I could tell, and admittedly, I did not watch all of it. There were other things, other things I had to watch. I saw Cole Hudson at the left guard for all that. And so I began to think, okay, is Cole Hudson now, are they looking at him at left guard now with the first group is Hayden Connor the second center now is Hayden Connor still the left guard he's just getting worked at the second center and whenever Hayden Connor's out they're putting in Cole Hudson at left guard in the chat when I was talking about this on Monday people said that there was some other site that said that Nato Yamusolo somebody else was saying was getting some work with them and I said I don't think that's right but admittedly I didn't I didn't see all of it there were times that I wasn't paying attention um it could have been that, that they were watching the drill wrong because I didn't see it but I can't it wasn't like I had my eyes on the offensive line the whole time. So today when I went in, I wanted to make sure that I got my eyes on the offensive line for a good portion of the time, just to see what was going on. And sure enough, dude, Hayden Connor was working as the second center again today for the whole time, Hmm. the whole time. Um, Nothing that left guard for him. No. And, and all, and and in all my time, um, you know, going to these practices and watching these practices, especially under Sark, they've cross-trained Connor before. They've cross-trained Cole Hudson before at center. Um, but it's never been like something where it's two straight days where the whole time he's just working with the second group during the whole time that we've been out there, right? They've at least kind of moved him back 
you know, they've at least kind of moved him back to left for a couple series and then put in this the guy that was the second team center. In this case, we'd be talking about Connor Robertson. The guy behind him is Daniel Cruz, number 51, the true freshman. Um, and but today, what was different was Nato Yamuzolo was the left guard the whole time. And Hayden Connor was the left guard with the second group the whole time. The only time he wasn't was whenever Malik Agbo, number 67, would come in and rotate in with him. And so NATO today was like the offensive if, – if you were an alien that came down to earth today and you just got, you got to watch one practice, mm -hmm. you would say that the starting – that the two offensive lines, invariably, you would have no doubt that the two offensive lines were – Okay, starting offensive line, left tackle Kelvin Banks, left guard Nato Yamuzolo, center Jake Majors, right guard DJ Campbell, right tackle Cam Williams. And you'd say that the second group was left tackle Trevor Goosby, left guard uh, Cole Hudson with Malik Agbo minimally mixing in, uh, Jake Hayden Connor at center, um, Connor Stroh at right guard, and Andre Kojo at right tackle. And that's what you would say it was. Like that, that's what it was the whole time. Nothing changed. And so now I wish we would have had the availability with Sark after practice because he wouldn't have given a good answer on this, but maybe he would have given something that gave us a little – I don't – and we're going to have to talk with sources about this. I don't know like if they're moving Connor to center. And if so, what does that mean for Neto? Because I don't know if, what you have to say about it. I, I think that it has – whether or not Neto moves to left guard, whether or not he takes over a starting left guard spot, which brings on a whole other conversation, right? That brings on a whole other conversation because Neto, he he hasn't he hasn't done much since he's been at Texas. He hasn't got to play much. He's played sparingly, and when he has played, he's had some trouble. I can pull up the um, I can pull pull up what he did last year, whenever he got to play. But you know he. This was, regardless of any of that, this was an offseason where he needed to make some moves, right? This was an offseason where Nato Yamuzolo, he came in with that group and people celebrated Kelvin Banks and they celebrated Cam Williams. And to almost the same degree, they celebrated Nato as one of these dudes that was going to be, a, you know, a super important piece moving forward. But last year, he played 47 snaps on those 47 snaps that were all all garbage time, right? He, he, he never got into games during meaningful you know it wasn't like a connor robertson who played 109 snaps and 60 something of those were meaning a meaningful game versus oklahoma right this is like nato played 47 snaps during garbage time right um he, he allowed four run stuffs and he committed one penalty so five total acts of disruption allowed and or penalties caused on 47 snaps that's that's once every 9.4 snaps that's the that if over the course of a season if he would have done that that would have been by far the worst out of the you know seventy two offensive line ten years that I've graded during, during during their time at Texas. So it was something where he needed to take a step forward. The good news is, is that I th I think that even if Hayden Connor is cross training at center, and even if Hayden Connor is still the left guard with the ones, the fact that they have NATO in there with the first group today at least practicing with it and at least show at least showing like he is a player who's going to be uh an important part of the two deep that looks like he might be pushing to play i mean mm -hmm. like what else can you say about that i mean is that how we can characterize it an important part of the two deep that looks like he's pushing to play yeah i think that would be i mean that would be good news the, the, the good news side of it for me alex would be especially with offensive linemen second year in you want them to be taking a step and you want them to be at least fighting for attention, right? Right, but we're but but this is third. Is it this it, third? Because this kid, he he came in with Kelvin and Cam Williams, and oh, so he be a, so not just a regular sophomore. So maybe redshirt sophomore. Yeah, right? yeah, is that right. Yeah. Okay, but either way, we're so we're talking about okay, so a third year guy there, and then you're talking about a senior with with Connor, correct? Yes. Yeah. So the worry would be. You know, your first gut would be, hey, if it's a senior offensive lineman, he needs to be the guy because he's put in the time, but also you assume he's just getting better and better. So it's like you're talking about how much – is this just the the basic layer of it or are they thinking that for the Colorado State game in 100-and-something days that Yamuzolo would be the left guard? Because then, like you said, then it's a whole different discussion. I would assume it's the smaller version of what you're talking about 
and they know they need some rotational help. I, that's what I would assume right now. All right, all right. So even if we're assuming that, and we're kind of doing the Jason Sukamel, tap the brakes, tap the brakes, and I would say tap the brakes a little bit on mm-hmm. on Neto because we haven't seen it out of him yet, right? But but one of the important things coming into this spring, and one of the things that we wanted answered was, man, has Neto taken a <laughs> taken a step, right? And and the and so the fact that Flood is pleased enough with him to put him in. Oh, he was playing ahead of Cole Hudson today. He was lining up ahead of Cole Hudson. The, mm-hmm. That that doesn't that doesn't just happen be, willy nilly, you know. Right. Seat of the pants, kind of, or seat of the pants? Is that a, a the, thing? by the fly by the seat of the pants? I think that was yeah, good. Yeah. That. Seat of the pants. It's like seat of the pants. Yeah, yeah like flooding the, flood the seat of the pants guy. He's a he, he's 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 a, he's a calculated dude, right? And yeah. so just the simple fact that Neto has put himself in a position where flood feels comfortable saying like, look, even if this is just a mix and match kind of thing, we're going to put you in with the ones that tells me that from what flood has seen, which is orders of magnitude. And that could be an understatement greater than what we've seen, right? Orders of magnitude greater than what we, we, we know about the young man as a person and as a player that he's willing to do that. Well, I think that, that that kind of answers our question for us. I think that I think that Neto's making moves, and I don't know if we're looking at an offensive line shakeup. I don't know if we're looking at it, but it's certain. It's certainly it's on the radar now. Yeah, uh, it's, it's on. It's on the radar, and yeah, we're just, cool. we're gonna have to keep keep following it. Obviously, Alex will keep following that. If you want the full practice reaction and uh, to what Alex saw today, go to orangebloods.com and check that out. Also, Anwar had a little practice report that popped up. Jason Sukamel and the full gallery is out there of the pictures he got today at practice uh, for the Wednesday practice. So check that out at orangebloods.com. Alex, uh, while we uh, take a breath here, we'll check some chats here in a second. It is, uh, you know, it's in that noon hour, which is, uh, lunchtime for a lot of people. Uh, they're getting a little hungry out there. I know you got an idea for them. Tell them about Texas beef traders. Oh gosh, Texas beef traders. Well, listen, I just, I just, I just ate some Texas beef traders. My wife made last night spaghetti, meatballs. I there were some leftover meatballs that I that I you know put in. Ate them just now, man. It's it is like gourmet ground beef, and you can get it for four dollars a pound at Texas Beef Traders Ranch Direct from Mason, Texas. You can just scan it right there with the QR code, um, and make sure whenever you call up there, you go in there. It's right in the heart of Lakeway. Make sure and tell tell Darren. Make sure and tell Shay that you've heard about it on Orange Bloods because you, you're going to get ten percent off. And li- look, it's it, it's already cheaper than what you're going to get at the store. But here's how it's different than what you're you're going to get at the store. Okay. You're getting you're 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 getting meat that was just just harvested, just processed 13 days ago and hung up for 13 days on site there in Mason, Texas. I mean, we're we're we're, we're talking the best Angus beef that you can possibly get. I've I have a hard time explaining to people how much better this 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 meat is, and it's because you know not only that it's local, you you know that it's American. When you buy beef that says made in America. All it has to do is be processed here in America. Like, dude, so much of that this stuff comes from Argentina. It comes from all over the all over the globe, right? And then it, it comes to some distribution center in San Antonio. They process the meat there and they sell it to you as, as American beef when it just it just isn't. We're talking here: no mRNA vaccines, no inoculations, no cockamamie steroids. Grass fed, grass finished. The nutrition is supplemented by bovine nutritionists there on staff. And look. Just go in and see Darren and go see Shay. They'll they'll tell you about it. They'll give you a beer. They'll sit you down. They'll they'll you know they'll pour pour you a glass of wine if that's what you want. But Texas Beef Traders is where you want to be. I, I it's 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 cheaper than the, the stuff you buy at the store, and it's just so much better. Good clean meat for you and your family. Ranch Direct imported from Mason, Texas. And look, if you don't live near Lakeway, right there in the heart of Lakeway and off of Lomans Crossing. Just call up to the store. Tell them, tell them you heard about the heard about them from Alex, Texas Beef Traders, TexasBeefTraders.com. Get your discount, and they'll just bring it to you. You have no excuses. Texas Beef Traders, TexasBeefTraders.com. There you have it. If that didn't make you hungry for lunch, I don't know what we can do. It is house divided again. Catch getting better uh, today. Where he's taking a taking a day to try to get back to. Back he to needs to get better, man. Yeah, I got that call from Catch. <laughs> I told him, man, go to the store. 
I keep yeah. telling him to, to, to go take some Zycam. I hope he listens to me this time, man. You, that Zycam works. If you just take one of those an hour, man, like, that'll knock it out. But yeah, he's, yeah, hope, he, hope he's not like he wasn't too interested in going to the grocery store. No, he doesn't <laughs> sound like, yeah, he's not like he needs some rest today. Hopefully he's going to be able to get it. Uh, by the way, we do appreciate the folks that scan that QR code, as uh, Alex was talking about. Texas Beef Traders, thanks to all of our great partners uh, at Orange Bloods Live, including Specs. They bring you the chat. We got 300 and... Eh, 3.30 or so in that Specs chat right now, and we do appreciate it. Uh, let's hear from Specs because they can get you all stocked up. Tournament gets started tomorrow. How's your bracket? Even if it sucks, Specs has got something for you. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets, it's Specs. Cheers to savings. Just get your favorite whiskey, and whether your team wins or loses, you're good. Uh, no yeah. problem. Uh, Blake throws in a nice chat for us today. Hook them Wednesday. Good afternoon, Chad and Alex. Thanks for the great stuff, as always. Blake, we appreciate you, Thank you checking sir. it out. Uh, appreciate all those chatters. Uh, all right, Alex, you mentioned offensive line. Um, I'll just throw a quick question at you. I saw notes from Anwar. I saw notes from you. I feel like one of the themes that may come out of today is – couple you know a couple balls hit the ground in terms of uh, in terms of receiving give me your thoughts on it big deal pump the brakes do you care what do you think well i think it was probably the day where we saw we saw probably more drops today than we'd seen but dude it's i mean it's fine it's fine it's just fine and look it i think Anwar says that you know i saw one i saw one from jonte i saw the running backs drop a couple passes um, which is, I mean, it's been, it's, it's been un uncharacteristic, especially from Jonte, man. Gosh, the guy looks like a million bucks. He's just, he's the total, total alpha out there, but yeah. Well, and, and Alex, real quick, I hate to interrupt, but just because you put out a great video from the end zone, I would tell people to go check out at Alex Dunlap NFL on, uh, on Twitter, if you want to check it out, but a video of him going up and really snatching a ball out of the air. When I have seen him live, his hands are great especially in traffic going up to get a ball like that. So to me, I, from what I've seen, very limited, I would tell a Texas fan, do not spend any time today worrying about number one and drops. No, no. It's just like it, it, it's not going to be a – it's not going to be a concern. You know, it's, I mean, Jonte's got awesome hands. <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah. it's – I don't know, you know, what it, what it, what it was today. But Onwar said there were a few of them. I saw one. I don't know what Onwar said in his post. Um, he might have been watching him a little more closely. Like I said, I was watching a lot of the offensive line just to see if this stuff was was sticky with Connor and with uh, Neto. But, um, dude, the uh, the 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 deal with um, the deal with the drops just I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry. Um, yeah. um, the other thing would be just Quinn Quinn Ewers. You know, we don't. It's one of these deals, like we say. And we've talked about it, Chad. It's like, you know, people know Qu Quinn is Quinn. They don't necessarily know about, you know, Parker Livingstone or, you know, Tia Savea or, you know, some of these new faces, right? Kendrick Blackshire or stuff like that. So you, you tend to, um, you know, as somebody like me that thinks about the program a lot, thinks about the team a lot, and somebody that, you know, I mean, my job is to get the information to people. For me to just say stuff like, Man, Anthony Hill looks awesome out there. And, you know, Quinn Ewers looks – he looks like a great quarterback. Or, like in the past, saying, like, boy, B. John Robinson sure looks like a million bucks. Out. I mean, people are like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Tell me well, something got, I don't know, right? Yeah. Um, you gotta, well, and we were talking the other day about – and I think it was – and you may have been a part of this discussion, but that when you guys go out to practice, you guys have to balance out between the things you already know going in and trying to validate that something like a you know hey do i really need to watch kelvin banks super closely today exactly, yep. right and find out if he's a badass it's like well you know going in he's a badass so then it's about balancing that out with like you said those newer names what does blackshire look like what you know, trey moore or whatever it is mm -hmm. so i think it's it's that balancing act but i did i was interested in your comment on yours today kind of played right off of the drops for me cuz a drop can happen two different ways a drop can also be the quarterbacks not delivering it the right way. But I think you would tell people today that if there were drops today 
and number three threw the ball. It wasn't on number three. Am yeah, I correct? Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys know Quinn's good. I mean, and you know, in this kind of setting, especially just a, you know, a completely, what is it like antiseptic, like uh, stair, what, what is it, like a hospital room kind of, you know, no, no nothing, nothing, uh, nothing coming at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you know, just where he's just got where he's totally clean. He's throwing against air. He can just show off the arm. But dude, man, Quinn is Quinn's on fire, man. He is, he is, he looks awesome. And I'd venture, I'd venture to say he looks more confident and better than I've ever seen him. Um, now, granted, we haven't got to see him a whole ton with pressure in his face, but, you know, you know, I had a bunch of sources I talked to from the Saturday practice where he did have to face situations with pressure in his face. And all they talked about was, you know, his, his level of comfort and how he looked really good and all, you know, all the rest of it. And I just, man, today, just when I was watching him, I was just like, man, it's like every, he's just throwing dots, man, just dot after dot after dot. And some of these are deep balls. And I can't wait. I think fans are going to be, uh, look, I think one of the things coming out of the spring practices, the pe people are going to say, if there ever was any, and look, with live bullets, who knows? I'm of the belief that even in the spring game, the difference between what his first offensive line is going to be as far as the push that they're allowing to get generated right now versus a very talented and good second offensive line, those guys don't hold up quite as quite quite as well. As one coach that was there on Saturday told me, they don't just stone dudes on every single play like the way that the first offensive line does, right? These are guys that are stoning dudes. They're giving a lot of people real, real trouble. So I have a, I have a feeling that Quinn's going to have some time back there Maybe an interesting thing to think about would be if it is ones versus twos in the spring game, he's gonna he's gonna have to face some, you know, maybe some Colin Simmons, maybe Trey Moore work some with the ones, some with the ones. so I mean there's gonna be some edge guys that are gonna be scary that could kind of get back there to him, right? Yeah. That's the that's the that's one of the things that happens whenever your program's in a spot like Texas is right now. You have young guys coming up that are like hilariously awesome. This like you just laugh at the fact that how you know in the past it's just it's just crazy. It'll it, you could die laughing to think that this guy wouldn't have started three years ago if he would have come to Texas, like Colin Simmons. He he would have walked in and be, been the best player on the defense, right? So um, there there could be some of that, but I I kind of think it'll hold up well. And if the line holds up well, Sark's gonna let him uncork it and just show this off because I know like Sark's gonna want to show this off, he, like he's. Quinn's on a different level right now. He's 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 playing he's playing really well. He's just he's just he's he's slinging it, man. He's throwing lasers. It's um, he just he looks really good out there. And I know it's like there was a question that somebody had about um, the uh, you know like they haven't really heard and what's this haven't really heard anything about Broughton and Collins. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Who backs him up? We can we can talk about that. But it's like I feel like we. With with Quinn, it's the thing that we talked about earlier. It's not really newsworthy to say that he looks good, right? Quinn always looks looks good in these spots. But I did want to say that specifically today, but kind of just as a, as an aggregate feeling through all these practices that, that we've gotten to go to, right? Is that I don't I don't want to be lost on people that right now Quinn just doesn't look doesn't just doesn't easy for me to say <laughs> doesn't just look good. He looks awesome. He looks really good, better than I've ever seen him. Are you so, pulling the old Mac Brown? Not good. Great. Not a good player. Great player. Is that what you're doing? You're going there? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. I, I guess so, man. There are a lot of Mac Brownisms that I try and incorporate in in my own life, Chad. Hey, it's a good. Uh, it, it's a good thing for Texas fans to hear. Obviously, that the quarterback has taken that step. So uh, I think that's good for fans to hear. We will get to that chat uh, about the defensive line. I think it's an interesting place to go. Uh, before we do that, let me just talk about breathing and sleeping and snoring. If you're doing some of that snoring or way too much of that snoring, sinus and snoring specialist is the place that can help you. They help me, and I love talking about them since 2017. That's when I went in. Found out what was going on with me. Found out how blocked up my nasal passages were. And then we went about fixing it, and I have never regretted it one day since then. I sleep better. I had moderate obstructed sleep apnea. That got dealt with. I was snoring like crazy. That got dealt with. I had all those allergies. I didn't have a ton of them. I was a, mainly a cedar guy, but they can dial up those allergy drops for exactly what bothers you and get rid of your allergies 
for good. Uh, you can check them out uh, at sinussnoringent.com. The number is 512-601-0303, or just scan that QR code. Some of you have already done that. I appreciate it. Some of you have already gone in to see Dr. Slaughter. He does pride himself on meeting you in the first consultation. So you'll love the way you're treated. Uh, I know I do. Uh, I know I did and do. I know my wife does, and you will as well. Sinus and snoring specialists feel clear, rested, and healthy. Healthy. That's the word we're hoping for, for Jeff Ketchum when he is back. Um, maybe do tomorrow? You, maybe tomorrow. Do you, have to, do, you, do you have to wear one of those uh, CPAP machines at, at night? I do not do the CPAP. My wife does the CPAP, and she's really gotten comfortable with it. I actually have a, um, I have a dental device that I wear because I'm, a, I'm a, a, a clincher. I do the I do the clinch and then but it, it also helps with the snoring, kind of keeping things open. So yeah, I kind of have like a I look like a crazy football player when I'm going to bed. I've got the like double mouthpiece thing in, but I can't imagine sleeping without it now. I've been doing it so long, I can't imagine doing it without it. I think I guess yeah, I, I don't I, I I don't snore, but I think I I think I I think my dentist is I kind of grind my teeth. So maybe I could go go yeah, see somebody, go see some some somebody about that. My my dad used to wear that CPAP and um you know you know he's 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 since passed but um he um at first at first it's you know it took a while for him to get used to it mm -hmm. but then after that he like once he got used to it he couldn't like he couldn't sleep without it he just said like the yeah. sound of the machine and stuff like that he just he like he had to have the machine he, he had to take it with him on trips and stuff yeah and i remember back then i think they're probably and you would know better it's your sponsor but i think that they have the machines now that are like probably a little bit smaller than this bulky old thing he had to carry around and he yeah. put this thing it wasn't common to travel with him back then my dad was like a traveling business dude or whatever he'd have to put it through tsa they'd look at it like it was some kind of bomb or something <laughs> yeah. you know, like, what, what, is, what is what is this thing i'm sure that that's not a problem these days they probably have a nice little package you can just zip up and take on the road with you i'm sure yeah the best story i have from my wife's experience is she is a girl scout leader and they go on camping trips each year she was able to go camping she was able to run a cord to you know, an outlet to plug it in. She had two nights of sleep camping in the tent and got like a 100 score and a 94 score in terms of like you know what they want to see. And so she had two great nights of sleep at a camping trip that she hadn't had in a long time. So uh, that stuff has been very cool with that's, sinus and snoring specialists. That's definitely roughing it, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's a different kind of roughing it. Yeah, they, they do the. Sometimes it's a little more glamping than camping. Yeah. You, you know how that can be. Yeah. Um, well, Alex, you brought up this chat. Let me pop it up here again because I do think it's interesting. Uh, it says, haven't really heard anything about Broughton and Collins, good thing or bad thing, and and who backs them up. Since it's such a rotational position, let's talk about what you're seeing there. Would you tell people that Collins – do Collins and Broughton fall into that category we just discussed of, hey, we know they're good and you kind of move on to other guys? Or, you know, is, is there something else with them? Uh, well, I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't know they're good. They look good. We don't know they're good. They weren't good last year. Um, you know, I, it's Alfred Collins was a guy that was a flash player, right? He's a flashy player. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I had the football with friends show last year and I had Jim Nagy on there, the director of the senior bowl. And he told me something that just stuck with me the whole year. And he's like, he's like, I want to see Alfred Collins have a season this season where it's more than just a, you know, a flash here and there. Right. And that's, and, and that's what we saw now. Collins was better than Broughton as far as standing up against the run last year. At least he didn't get washed away in the run game, right? He he could he could take on double teams. Those those double teams versus inside zone that we were talking about earlier, right? Which is the kind of the three hand technique, and then and then one of them one of the players moves on to the second level and tries to cut off a linebacker, right? Vernon Broughton would get washed away in those spots, whereas Alfred Collins would hold those two dudes, free up the linebacker to scrape across and be able to make a play. Like the, the that was the, that that was one of the beautiful things about Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy last year, because not only could they take those dudes to keep the linebackers clean, right? Mm -hmm. They would split those double teams and they would win versus those two guys, and the linebackers would be kept clean, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like it's killing, you know, it's killing three birds with one stone. <laughs> but the the um, with Collins, it wasn't so much being able to split them the same way, right? But at least he he could hold up. With Vernon Broughton, he had trouble holding up, right? And if we look at the if we look at the numbers from last season, so that would be the um, let's on the on the on the master sheet for the market share for the defensive productivity. 
we had Vernon Broughton last year that played how many snaps? It was 281 snaps. He generated production once every 14.6 snaps. Um, on the whole season, Vernon Broughton didn't have one single run stuff, which is incredible to wow. me considering like Tavondre Sweat, he played 415 snaps. He had 19 run stuffs. Byron Murphy had 15 run stuffs on 370 snaps. It wasn't like Broughton played that many less snaps, 281. So no, we don't know yet if he's good. Yeah, and to but, be and to be honest, Alex, with what we're I mean, just in spring practice, hell, in the spring game, twenty four days from now, are you really going to be able to tell that much? I mean, you we, you talked about live bullets. How live are the bullets going to be in spring to where we really learn before you get to Colorado State? Well, it depends if they go good on good or whether they go. I mean, if they go good on good, you'll find. I mean. Yeah. yeah, let's yeah, let's 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 see him versus let's let's see him take on DJ Campbell. I think that that'll be I think that would be a good proving ground for Vernon Broughton. Um but yeah, we don't we we don't know. He's he's the, but he's the best option that they have right now. And, and so they have Vernon Broughton playing nose, they have Alfred Collins playing three technique. Um and I'll tell you both guys look like a million bucks. Mm -hmm. We we we've, we've seen them get to We've seen them get to do some kind of things today. Some kind of things today was the first day where we've seen them actually sort of engage with one another, try and drive each other back, do some stuff like this. I think that Broughton looks good. Um, gosh, somebody looks good just flying around and like really hitting bags like in full time. It, this is we'll get back to the defensive tackles, but I'm just this is something I just wanted to get out there. Yeah. Um, safeties. Uh, Blake Gideon has this deal where it's this awesome uh, like. You know, like the the uh, shoots that you fire into, and like you can fire through and stuff. Like, imagine a long shoot like this with yeah. a with a slider thing on top and a bag that you can take and you hook it up to this thing, and it's like a little ball bearing up there, and you can throw the bag down this long sliding thing with a ball bearing on top, and you throw it, and it, like it's like a ten yard thing, and then the safety's got to run in here, and it, they they hit each other right here, right, and it's a big 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 collision, right? Hmm. It's enough to where if it were you or me running to hit this bag, it might knock us backward. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he really yeah. whizzes that thing down and it, it goes fast. It's a really greased up ball ball bearing at the very top. And um, dude, X Xavier Filson me in that drill is, is is like it looks like an attempted murder. Like I just <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. Like the freshman safety Filson me. Whoo gosh. I mean, that's like that's a crime. Good. It's like hey. crimes and stuff. But um, so but with the defensive tackles, it's the first time that we've got to see anything like that today. The Phil Simi stuff, the you know, the the corners versus the wide receivers and the tackling drills. But the guys that are behind them right now, so behind Vernon Broaden is 53, Aaron Bryant, behind Collins is 98. Tio Tio Ali'i Savea Tia I, something Savea Tia Ali Lee. Just go, remember, just go T E. Just T E and stop. T E Savea, you're good. T T E Savea Savea, mm -hmm. and then behind them um, is Sadir Mitchell at the nose and Alex January at defensive tackle. Oh, and let me say this about January. I think he looks good enough to where he can. Oh, but Jerry Bledsoe rotates in with that second group with. Mm -hmm. um, he he rotates in with with Savea, so I consider him more of like a second team guy. But the guys that come in right behind them are ninety and ninety seven, Sidir Mitchell and Alex January. But January is a guy who I could see I could see put you know pushing, and I think he could play nose or tackle. Um, and I think you know depending on how Vernon Broughton does, we got we got Barry Sorrell in the chat. Maybe Barry like what does what does Baron say about how Broughton was looking? I'd be interested mm, to hear from Baron Sorrell's dad. Um, yeah. But the uh, depending on how, how he does, look, man, and even not depending on how he does, if we just look at the participation from last year, the player participation. So Tavondre Sweat played the most snaps of any interior defensive lineman last season. He played 53.5% of snaps. Byron Murphy played 47% of snaps. So the average of those two guys, clearly 53-47 is 50. So if we're talking about the interior defensive line playing 50% of snaps, that's a lot of leftover snaps for other guys, right? Your back, your your direct backup, Alfred Collins played forty percent of snaps. Vernon Broughton played thirty seven percent of snaps. Um, even guys like, uh, let's see, who would who would be next down as for Trill Carter played twenty six percent of snaps. Those are vacated snaps. Um, 
Jerry Bledsoe played 10% of snaps. Aaron Bryant played six. So there are these guys, even before we get down to those 10% and sub 10% dudes, right? We're going to need to talk about somebody besides Alpha Collins and besides Vernon Broughton. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to step into 40, 36 to 40% snap shares. And then one other guy to step into a, like a Trill Carter's 25% snap share. And then one person, you know, maybe if, you know, it's, it's a little bit less and there's more of a rotation. Maybe we're talking about two guys with 25% snap shares behind the, the, the 45 to 50% snap share guys. Then that would leave us with two other guys that are going to be more like 15% snap share dudes. And so I definitely think that Alex January, based on what I've seen out of him, is somebody that is going to be at least one of those 10 to 15% snap share dudes with room to move up from, from there simply because, man, I, you just you don't really know what to think about these guys. Aaron Bryant played last year, 46 snaps. He didn't do a thing. He didn't even register a assisted tackle or a run stuff or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, Savea, he looks good. It, his lower – his lower half is um, dense, and he looks to me like he'll be he'll be pretty hard to move. But he's kind of he's a little small. Like mm. I'd say small. He would he would he would roll me up into a ball and roll me down Red River Street, right? But he's he's <laughs> uh, you know he's 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 a, he's a little bit he's a little bit shorter than you would you know a little bit shorter than you would think, and um, kind of a fire plug, right? Mm -hmm. um, Bledsoe had some issues Saturday holding up against the run from what I was told. So it, it's just, I don't know how this whole thing's going to, this whole thing's going to shake out. I think in a perfect world, you'd have a light bulb go on with city or Mitchell and just to have that dude be the new Tavondre sweat, you know, give, right. give him, give him a year, like a 2022 Tavondre sweat and route to maybe next season, having some kind of monster, you know, coming out party weighing 370 pounds, but not everybody can, you know, can morph into what Tavondre sweat morphed into. So it's going to be interesting to see, but as far as the you know the the immediate depth, that's how it looks. It's it's those two guys. It's, it's ninety five and forty five, and then behind them, Savea slash Bledsoe and Bryant at the nose, and then you got your Sidier Mitchell, your Alex January, those types, and then you know you got guys behind them like Zach Swanson and stuff like that that I'm not sure how often that they're going to get on the football field. There you go. Thank you for that chat. Uh, Manual, also Blake back into the chat. Just followed Alex on Twitter. It took me long enough. Hey, Blake, <laughs> as long as you got there. As long as you got there. Better <laughs> appreciate it, Blake. That's right. Also, <laughs> Mr. Sorrell is in that chat. He's, uh, he says 88 is great. He says 88 is ready to, ready to roll. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate you jumping in there, Mr. Sorrell. Any news you can give us, you know we'll take it. And Squarehead says he went to Specs to buy a bottle of Deep Eddie to hide for his wife on Easter. Okay, that's a good Easter present. Instead of you know hunting for eggs, she's hunting for Deep Eddie vodka. I'm assuming you meant that instead of hide from the wife. But anyway, you uh, go either way. It, go either whatever way. whatever you're doing with Easter and Deep Eddie vodka, I uh, I support that. So uh, definitely check that out. And shout out to Specs for helping us with the chat. Uh, lots of uh, Texas football stuff to get into. We will continue that. Also, I want to remind you, we talked about our March Madness competition. Whoever wins the bracket is going to get a 65-inch TV from Audiovisual Consultations. But obviously, that's one winner. If you have a man cave in your mind, you have a movie room in your mind, your family's always talked about it, and it's time to do it, this is the place, 255-8678. They have been doing it locally owned and operated since 1988. So they've been through a lot. They've seen all the changes in TVs and speakers and everything. They know everything. They have answered all the questions. They have put TVs in places you haven't even thought of, and they'll do the same for you. Let them handle every detail. They can get a better deal on the TV than you can. They can get a better deal on the speakers than you can. They can get a better deal on the furniture than you can. So all the things that are set up, that is what AV Consultations can do for you. 255-8678 or go to avconsultations.com. Again, shout out to AV for uh, providing that TV for the winner. Best of luck to everybody. I don't think it's going to be me. Alex, how's your bracket looking? After uh, I, think, I think I'm strong, strong, strong like bull. But yeah. I, I think I, I think it's one of these where um, and I'll have to look and see where I was in the orange bloods one. I, mean, I think I might be top 10 or something because okay. I know I, I did the same bracket from some of my other ones. But I think the issue that I'm running into is that I think I'll be over. It's I have a I have sort of a chalky finish, you mm -hmm. know, 
And so I think I'll be overtaken by others because my number of possible points, at least in some of my other brackets, isn't as high as some of the people behind me. And I'm not sure that I have as much differentiation as I need with the way that the things are going to run out from them for them not to overtake me with the with the possible points. So gotcha, gotcha. We'll yeah, see, I, we'll see what happens. I think I'm staring down the barrel of 28th place if I'm seeing it correctly, and if I, I believe I'm seeing yours here, I think you're in 15th place. So okay. not terrible. We're both lurking in in, in certain <laughs> ways, just kind of kind of lur- ho- hoping to lurk anyway. Uh, I could I I there. could use those I could use that audio visual consultations, but I am. Um, I'm not sure about that whole thing that you said about putting TVs in places that you could never dream of. I'm not. I'm not sure what hey, that means. <laughs> dude, they put. Have you ever? Have you been to a Pluckers where they put the TV in the mirror in the bathroom? No. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. Like, AV I consultations would, could do that. That's they're the ones that do it. When people go to Pluckers or like Cover Three and some of the places around the Austin area, if you go to the bathroom and you see that screen that they put in the mirror, AV consultations, they're the ones that did that. So they can put a TV in a mirror. They can put like, you want to go projection screen outside. You want to go in your kitchen, like the person that makes all the meals. Maybe Mm -hmm. you're whipping up some Texas beef traders, right? Which I am often. And maybe you're in the kitchen or maybe you're out on the grill, whatever, wherever you are. And you're like, man, I'd love to have a TV here. They can do that for you. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. It's a big time, Um, big time prize package. That's great. And hopefully, uh, hopefully the uh, everybody's brackets is uh, are looking good, men's side, women's side, and all that. Uh, We will get a little buy or sell before we are done. I had some buy or sell ready for catch. I'm going to transfer those to Alex and see how he does. Alex has got some buy or sell for me, I think. Yeah, I got him in. I got him in. Alex is ready to go too. So we got that before the end of the show. Uh, Alex, in terms of Texas notes, we talked about the offensive line. We talked a little defensive line. So we got real nice and nerdy on the line of scrimmage today. Uh, We also talked about the drops. You will hear that word, Texas fans. But Alex is telling you not to freak out on the first few practices of spring to have a day where the ball hits the ground a little bit. Don't freak out about it, at least right now. Um, Alex, what else? Anything else jump out that you'd want to throw in today? Yeah. I, um, you know, one, th- one thing I, I would say is that, you know, w- with the um, – I was – man, I was just I – was, I was looking at the group, like the, like the group today of the, of the second wide receivers, right? And Amari Nyblack, the tight end, mm-hmm. who missed most of winter conditioning – and it's kind of been running, kind of, kind of getting behind. You know what? As far as uh, as far as his you know playing time and where he's where he's getting to getting to run in individual drills and stuff. I saw he was getting to run in some with the second team today, which is better than what's been going. The, um, Amari Nyblack is inevitable. I think it's like he's gonna you don't know, bring in that guy and give him. I'm sure the sure just a huge amount of nil money and you know spend a bunch of time recruiting this dude to be a dynamic tight end weapon seeing what he did against jade baron last year in the game versus texas of course he transferred in from from alabama um not to have him play right Mm -hmm. and juan davis has been a nice story through camp and he does look good sarkis talked about him but i I think eventually it's kind of going to be gunner helm and amari nye black but i was just thinking to myself that second group was out kind of running their patterns and stuff and I was just like, man, it was Ryan Wingo and it was Matthew Golden and it was Amari Nyblack. And I was just thinking, like, that's a good, I was like, but that's a good looking wide receiver. That's a good looking group of pass catchers. Mm-hmm. And that's the second, that's the second group. And I was thinking, it's like, that's, you know, not taking into account last year, but in e- either the previous two years to think about, you know, you're talking about guys like Casey Kane and Marcus Washington and Kelvante Dixon and, you know, it's like you would take that Matthew Golden, Ryan Wingo, Amari Nyblack group over any of them. You know, it's just crazy. And now they're, and, and now they're the twos. Um, you know, Wingo's – I don't consider Wingo like a two because he did get to play a ton ver- with the ones on, on, on Saturday. Golden, it feels like he hasn't kind of broken in with the ones just yet, not that I've seen or that I've heard of. Wingo, it feels like he's kind of moving in and out with the um, with the ones. So that's another thing that we'll have to keep on monitoring. 
Well, and Alex, it's one of my favorite things about this team to pay attention to is all this receiver stuff. Somebody threw this in the chat, so let's dig in a little deeper here. Jackson says, I'm not complaining at all, but do y'all think Sark took too many receivers from the transfer portal? His circle of trust with receivers is very tight. I don't see how everyone will see the field. So this is sort of the discussion we've been having about the combinations and how things work. So as you're out there today and you're seeing that combo, you mentioned what Wingo, Nye Black, and who's the other Golden. receiver? You mentioned? And, Golden. and Golden, yeah. So as you're watching that, how are you right now? How are you kind of processing the the combination of things? Are you looking at it as a Texas, as both a Texas fan, but also somebody that follows football closely? Are you looking at it as you got a knife and fork in your hand and you're ready to just consume the season, or do you have the thought of? You know, there's too much food in front of you, and how the hell am I going to eat all this? Well, hold on. So LFG is saying on a, there's only 45 likes. How are we how how are we gonna how, how are we gonna get by with how how are we gonna feed our how are we how are we gonna feed our own families, Chad? We're I talking mean, about consuming oh. this. Golly, do you, you 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 realize that if we don't get to uh, one one hundred likes, Catch is gonna dock our pay. Oh man, come on! Well, we got to get to a hundred likes, and well, we I keep mean, telling you, liking four hundred thirty-one people in the chat, and there's one there's forty-five likes. This is criminal. When you remember, like, subscribe, and get notifications. None of that costs you anything. It's free. Doesn't cost you anything, but it will help us. <laughs> yeah, so just free. help us with that yeah. like. You can do it. You can do it. And I promise you, I promise you, speaking for a &M and all Aggie fans, you will not be called an Aggie if you click the like button. I promise. Just because it happens to be a thumb, it's not that thumb. I swear. It's been <laughs> checked. It's a regular old like thumb. Yeah, man. That's all you need. And yeah. we can't get them to change it to a hook em emoji. I'm sorry we've tried. Yeah. If, they, if, if they do that, I feel like the numbers may go up. Pretend it's a hook em emoji today. That's yeah. what we need you to do. All right. We definitely appreciate it. No, I mean, as far as the wide receivers, I just, I, dude, I think that, um, I think that I, when, since when are, are, is, is anybody in the business of denying talent that wants to come into the program? Things work themselves out. Things work themselves out. Did, I mean, at the very end, after Bond had already come on board and Golden had already come on board, did, did si did Silas Bolden maybe seem a little bit a little excessive? Maybe, maybe it seemed a little bit excessive. You know, you wonder it's like, is he gonna play in the slot? He didn't play in the slot at all at Oregon State. He just he just he, he just he just didn't. He was an outside Deshaun Jackson type, T. Y. Hilton type guy, right? Out, outside receiver. So it'll be interesting. And I you know he's he's not even on campus yet. And we're talking about the log jam. So, but I'm never in the business of telling a coach at the university of Texas where, where I went to school. Hey, stop it with the talented player. <laughs> What's Just, all this hey, talent coach? What hey, come doing? on, come on. Stop it with the talented dudes. <laughs> Stop it with the studs. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm not in the business of doing it. So you're not, you're not, you're not sending Sark like, you know, random, uh, you know, anonymous emails. Hey, easy with this receiving talent. What are you <laughs> Come doing? Come on, dude. What the hell are you doing? It's nay on the receiver raid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, there's a lot. Well, it, it just brings up the question for me, Alex, of they hired, they hired Steve Sarkeesian for a reason. And he has been showing you more and more of that reason, which is he's not afraid to have multiple weapons. He is not afraid to use multiple weapons. He called plays for a national championship on a team that had multiple weapons. Yeah. And I've been saying it ever since I watched that 2020 team carve up college football. When Texas made the choice, I thought, okay, I get where I get the reason why. And that's essentially what he's that, that's just what he's got to prove he can do that he can move all these guys around. And you've talked about it. I think, you know, when he says, hey, that guy could go into slot or come back outside, does he mean it? Or is it just he's rotating outside and he's rotating slots and he's rotating on the others? We need to find all that stuff out. But if he really, really goes super versatile, I think he'll find a way to use all this talent. But he's got to prove he can do it. Yeah, it's a, that's all. Like, it's a – Hey, and that's why he gets 10 million bucks a year, right? And it's yeah. like, figure it out, man. It's like, yeah. I, and when he, and again, yeah. you've got that template, not just at Bama now, what you saw last year, what you saw the in his in his first couple of years at Texas, 
when it gets going and when he gets all those weapons going, it's, it is pretty scary stuff. Um, thank you for all the, the chats coming in today. And, uh, by the way, to this one, do we trust an Aggie I, te text guy? I don't know if you trust an Aggie. You can trust this Aggie. I'm telling you, <laughs> you can trust me. The like button will not hurt you. We will not hurt you, and it doesn't cost a thing. I promise you. Um, all right, before we get to buy or sell, I'm going to try to make you hungry one more time. If you're looking for a place to go out to eat, but you want to wear what you want to wear, have badass food, have a great environment, Taste on Main is a place I'll recommend for you. You've heard me talk about Hay City Store and how much we love them out there in Driftwood. Well, these are the same folks. This is Travis and Tamara and their place in downtown Buda, right there, 116 Main Street in Buda. My wife loves the downtown atmosphere down there. We love heading, heading down there for a great meal. Just think of it as the Hay City Store comfortableness and the attention to detail, but just crank it up to steakhouse level. Great steaks. Great seafood. The outside treehouse bar is unbelievable. Uh, again, no stuffy dress codes to worry about. And 10 to midnight, every Friday and Saturday, they've got their nightcap events going on. They serve some snack options in the last two hours. Get on out there uh, and check it out. That's 10 to midnight every Friday and Saturday. My wife and I are making the plans right now. We got all kinds of birthdays and anniversaries this time of year. We're getting out there to celebrate one of them very soon. Taste on Main right there in downtown Buda. You know what's the out. thing about downtown Buda, Chad? Is that that's on the west that's on the west side of the freeway, right? And then right because I come home yeah. from yeah. Yep. I didn't know that Buda had a downtown, right? Be but I I'm 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 frequently down at down at Cabela's, right? My son right. loves it. I I mean, mm -hmm. you don't got to tempt me with a good time, right? I was going to say it's just <laughs> <shit. laughs> I hate going in there. I can't stand it. My son's always asking me to go to Cabela's. He likes looking at the fish and all the mounts and stuff and uh, but um, we, we kind of take the back way home to get the spice wood and stuff. And so mm -hmm. we, like that's a dude, downtown Butte is like a pretty, it's a cool little down. Is that a river that's through there or a Creek or something? I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's like, I, I mean, it's definitely, if it's a Creek, it's a, it's a all weather Creek. It, like it's all, it isn't just like a dry weather Creek. Uh, got a bunch of little nice shops around there. I'll mm -hmm. bet you that is a good atmosphere for a, for a cool little new restaurant. Man. Yeah, it's very it's very cool. My wife was so impressed when we went down there. I'm, I can still remember us going down there the first time. We we're like, wow, we got to come back here. And just kind of the whole thing, you know, it's like a, if you want to do, hell, I'm almost 50. So when you get to the, you want to do like an old couple steakhouse and then just walk around a little downtown. That's kind of how we look at, uh, at Taste on Main and, and downtown Buda there. So yeah, they got a lot of good stuff going on out there. Um, and we've had some good stuff going on today in the chat. I'm just scanning here and seeing if they, this is, here's one I would probably agree with Alex. Texas fans will see Bolden will earn his way onto the field. Can't wait to see how that factors in. We're going to go through spring. We're going to get the spring game, Alex. And then they're going to come into fall practice and a dude that led his power five team in catches, touchdowns and yards on the outside is going to show up. He'll have studied, theoretically studied the plays because they've sent him the info and he's going to come in thinking, all right, now I'm going to prove to you I get a spot. I can't wait to see how Silas Bolden fits in. Yeah. I, can't, I mean, I have nothing more to say about that. I, I don't, I have, I don't know how, how it's going to happen. I don't have any, I mean, my insight on it is like, I know what he has played before, but you know, getting his coach Sark's mind about the way he envisions this stuff is just, that's a that's a chore, man. I don't I don't yeah. know how it's going to work. I, well, how I, about I, this? Let, let me give you a great conspiracy idea, Alex. I don't know if it's a conspiracy. Here's my insider like football idea for what he's doing. What if it's this? What if he knows Bond can play the slot, but he also knows what Bolden's going to be? He's going to let Bond have his reps out on the outside through spring, through the spring game even. But when when Bolden shows up. Once we get to fall practices and that first game, then all of a sudden, Bolden finds his way outside. Bond slides into that slot. Not that Moore's not going to have some opportunities, but that Bond will also find his way in there. And we start to see that versatility. Just, just a thought. Just a thought about what, what he might be thinking. Because I just feel like Sark in the back of his mind has to know why he got Bolden. I mean, you referenced it a while ago. He didn't just do that accidentally. He's got to have an idea for what that's going to be. 
Yeah. Originally, you know, originally I thought maybe this could be like a Keelan Robinson type of player, you know, that, that type of kind of player, clearly not a running back, but you know, Keelan Robinson worked out of the combine, both as a running back and a wide receiver. Um, but yeah, as, but as I watched him more and more, I realized that that was kind of a lazy take, man. Like he, he doesn't play the, he doesn't play the same way. I mean, he's, he's a, he's a vertical threat. It, he can actually get some volume, you know, so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting, man. It's like, that's a whole new, like, that's a whole new fly in the ointment. That we'll talk about this summer, but it's, you know, it's, it's not a bad fly in the ointment. It's just something that's right. like, it's, it's going to have to be managed. The flies you want in the ointment first <laughs> yeah. world fly in the ointment problems for yeah. Texas, all this talent at receiver LFG. Thank you for that chat. All right, Alex, uh, any other notes you want to throw out or you want to hit a little buy or sell here? Buy or sell. All right, you want to go first or second? Uh, what does that mean? That that, do I go? Do I give you one first or give you one second? Oh no, no, we usually go five and five. It's just one of us got to go first. So, do you want to get your five out first, or do you want me to do mine first? I'll do. I'll do my five. All right, hit it. Okay, uh, Alex is by herself. Look at All you. Right. NFL 2024 win total markets came out yesterday. The Cowboys okay. are set at ten and a half over under. The Texans are at nine and a half. Buy or sell, the Cowboys will have more wins in 2024 than the Texans. Um, right now, I'm going to sell. Right now, I would sell. I'd lean towards the Texans, actually. Uh, with with the I just with the momentum they've got, with it just feels like the chemistry is really good with that team. I think they're going to continue to get better. And I do not know what my Cowboys are going to be in 24, but right now, I think it's I think Texans feel more like an 11. 10, 11, 12 neighborhood, and Cowboys maybe 9, 10, 11. So if I'm going to pick one, I'd pick the Texans to be a little bit better. You don't take the division into account with with the Giants maybe going through some stuff, the, the, the Washington definitely. I think that uh, – but, I mean, gosh – I mean, a the, little bit, it, is, a little it isn't like the AFC South won't be going through every going through anything too. That's where I, I was trying to. I, I I was factoring in divisions, Alex. But after what I saw the Texans do last year, I don't think they're afraid of that AFC South. Whatever the tough part is of that AFC South for them, I think you know they're becoming the place you don't want to deal with in the no, AFC yeah, yeah, South. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's 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 good. All right, next one up. Lake Travis will fill back up. Before Arch Manning starts his first game as a Longhorn, <laughs> this is the greatest. That is the greatest Alex Dunlap buy or sell I have seen put together in a while. Um, that's a buy. I'm going to say it's a buy Thank that you. the lake will be full the day Arch takes his first snap, uh, starts his first game as a start. Yes, I think lake will be full when Arch starts. That'll give us some time, right? Yeah, well, are, are you are you saying that the lake? Do you think he's going to start a game this 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 fall? I'm 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 just asking for for my own boating pleasure. <laughs> You're asking are you saying this? he's going to start a game this fall? Or you, let you, me, are, okay, let me ask it this way before I give the official answer. Where are we in terms of fullness right now? How close I mean, are we to fullness? Oh, I mean, it's, it's sub it's sub fifty percent, but it it also was in 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 twenty eighteen, and it just took one it took one flood, right. To okay. fill it back up. I mean, we need like thirty something. Uh, I don't know the exact number of feet. It's um. Yeah, if, if it's if you're talking about sub fifty percent, I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna play the odds, and I will say, I'll say sell on the lake because I do think he may have to start a game this year, just based on football and and you know the the and Quinn Ewers and we talked about his history and stuff. I'm going to assume Art's going to have to start a game in 24. Yes. So, I'll sell I'll say the lake won't quite be there when he does it. Let me let we, me I'll turn the other way. To to be full, we needed to get up 49 feet for it to be and that's a lot. Yeah, uh, it is. for for it to be for me to get my boat in, we needed to come in 19 come up 19 feet. Okay. <laughs> I like how you're looking for boat. I tell you what, you know what? I'll say buy on your boat level, sell okay. on full. How about that? Yeah, okay. I'll I'll that's better than nothing. I'll All say right. you can put the boat on the water and as long as you bring a good TV with you, you can watch Arch start his first game when he has to do that at some point. How about that? <sighs> I just man, it just it just it just it just hurts bad. We 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 need a wet April and we need a Memorial Day monster and then the labor and then just the the hurricane season. Man, we needed to actually do something this year. That was uh, that that's the most personal buy or sell I think you've ever presented. That was very <laughs> personal. I could feel it. All right, let's see next one. 
the first four picks of the 2024 NFL draft will be quarterbacks. Oh, man. I saw a mock today that did that. Are we really going to see the cat from Michigan go four? Are we going to see McCarthy People sneak talking into about him going two now. The, yeah. The, like, into the rumors now there's, is that he's being linked to Washington. Yeah. And so, the, and so the, what the narrative is is that if – if it goes one Caleb Williams and two McCarthy, and then the Patriots would the 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 Patriots take mm-hmm. Daniels, and then okay. um, Drake May, you would, you would have the Cardinals up next. And there's been all the Minnesota Vikings connection to the Drake May because McCown was his like high school coach, and now he's the offensive coordinator, okay. and they brought so in be like a trade and, there or something. Yep. So yeah. maybe they tr- – because, you know, Questy, what he did, he made the trade – oh, gosh, who did he trade with? Well, I just I just know they have 11, and they recently acquired 23 with that one pick swap that, that they did. So they could yeah. go 11, 23, and a one next year to get up to four. I think ultimately, Alex, I'm going to buy it because I've watched what happens in this draft and teams get te- – A, teams get a little crazy for quarterbacks in that early first round, but then B, look at those teams you're mentioning. Either the team that's going to pick – or the team that's going to move into the pick is just in a desperate quarterback mode. So yeah, I'm going to I'll say and and also let let me give credit to McCarthy. I think you would agree McCarthy showed up at the combine and did what he needed to do. He kind of got everybody thinking about, oh, so he's not just a guy that hands off in a Michigan offense like, no, no, man, this guy can he can spin it. I think he did enough too to get himself up there, so I'll buy it. It also helps that Harbaugh is saying he's the best quarterback he's ever seen and stuff like that. Yeah, you're but, right. Doesn't yeah. hurt. But um, all right, next one. Isaiah Bond will be the Texas transfer who plays the highest snap percentage across offense and defense. Whoa! In in, in 2024. Okay, uh, Bond will be the Texas transfer who plays the highest snap percentage. I like the way you phrase that. There's maybe a couple other names in my head. Is it going to be over that guy? Is it going to be uh, snap percent? I, I'm going to buy, and I'll also factor in that I do. I'm going to I'm going to trust that Sark is telling us the truth when he says these guys may be all over the place. I'm going to trust that a receiver may be outside, but also might go inside. Bonds, like if he's already putting him outside in spring ball. And we know what he did in the slot at Bama. I just think he's he really turns into captain versatility at that point. So yeah, let me go with Bond. Uh, that's the fair that that's the safe bet right now. I think Alex, based on you know, like I wanted to get cute and maybe throw out some kind of a Trey Moore theory, but percentage wise, I don't think he's going to get to Bond. So I'll, I'll buy. I think the one that I'd have the I, just how how much longer does Michael Taft stay ahead of Andrew Makuba? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's the, a good one too. You figure right. safety, mate. Uh, it's just like that's the one I kind of thought. But yeah, I, I I can agree with what you say about Bond. Yeah. All right, and finally, by yourself, Freebirds is significantly better than Chipotle. Ooh, ooh. Okay, now we're throwing down. Now it's man's game time. Here we go. <laughs> uh, and look, and look what you picked. And you started with the with the College Station, uh, the College Station. Yeah, the man, I did. Right? You got to you, you got to know your enemy around here, man. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? And it's uh, it's a different kind of S word, but you did use a very important S word here. Freebirds is significantly better than Chipotle. Um. Hmm. Boy, this is it's a, it's a it's a heavy word. It's doing a lot of lifting. Uh, it's doing like 28, 30 reps at two twenty five. The word significantly there. Uh, I've been to Chipotle a handful of times. You know what? I'll stay on brand. It's called the show's called House Divided. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy. I buy gonna, that I'll, old. I just do Freebirds is so much better than. than I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lean in on my Freebirds and uh, and say yes. I'll say yes on that. You're big. You big fan. Dude, it's awesome. I mean, yeah. I was just, it's, it's like, there's more, there's so many more ways that you can, there's so many more like so- sauces and sides and uh, various options and stuff like that, man. To like free, dude, it's like, it's more, it's just, it's just, be- it's just so much better. It's like, I can't, I don't, I, if, if you gave anybody both, I, I don't see how anybody could say that Chipotle was anywhere near as good as Freebirds. And I know it's an Aggie place or whatever, but. 
See, that's good. These are the kind of things we need to have things the house divided can agree on because we're coming up on that first game in 12, 13 years and we're yeah. going to be disagreeing on everything. <laughs> we need to find the agreements. And yeah. I think free, free birds is definitely one of those places. Um, and I used to, I would always love when people in my classes at AM would like make quick trips over to Austin for their favorite places, right? Mm -hmm. They had their places in Austin where it's like, oh, if you haven't had, you know, the late night pancakes at this place or yeah, you haven't Kirby had Kirby Lane or something. Right? Yeah, these breakfast tacos or whatever. So always love that. All right. Uh, what about what about lanes in in uh, lanes in College Station? The the chicken strip yeah. place? Like, some, I do. I, lanes. I think Kane stole their sauce from those guys. I, I legit I, do because that place has been around for longer than, than, than raising canes. Yeah. I've said it. Uh, I've said it for a while, Alex. I believe canes in that discussion lanes is my gold medal. Canes is the silver medal. Canes is not bad by any stretch. I dig canes. I think lanes is a little bit better. It's great. Yeah. Love it. Look at there. Look at there. Free birds and lanes. We're That's having great. all kinds of crazy agreements. That's great. Yeah. Let, let's do it. All right, uh, let's do a little, uh, the second half of buy or sell here. Again, these were originally meant for Jeff Ketchum, but I, I think I've adjusted well enough. I think Alex is fine. Here we go, Alex. Buy or sell number one. Last season, Worthy caught 75 balls and Mitchell had 55. This year, you'll take Jonte to catch 70 plus and Bond to haul in 50 plus. Oh. I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to sell. I'm, I'm just, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about worthy. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure about Jonte even playing in the worthy role. Mm -hmm. I don't know where bond is going to play. I'm not sure he's going to be playing in the 80 Mitchell role. And I'm not sure if that role could get split up. 80 Mitchell's nearest competition last year was Casey Kane. That's not going to be anything like it is this year. Whenever Isaiah bond is going to, if he stays outside, he's going to have, not only Ryan Wingo, but also to a certain degree, Matthew Golden and then Silas Bolden to deal with. So I think it'll be less for Bond. Hence, okay. I'll, 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 I'll sell. Man, can you imagine if John Tay Cook goes from eight catches in his first year to over 70 to up into Zazer Worthy territory? He's an alpha, man. I mean, he's, he's, yeah. he's next up. He's an awesome player. That is awesome. All right, let's uh, stay with the team and we'll go right to the schedule, Alex. Buy or sell number two, Oklahoma, Georgia, at Arkansas, at A&M. You'll take Texas going two and two through those games. Also, I think Texas will go three and one through those games. Okay, and I think that the I th I think they'll beat Arkansas. I, th I think think they'll beat A and M, and I think that they'll win one of two, OU and Georgia. I think they'll split those two. I think I'd be pretty confident saying, yeah, that's a sell. Yeah. I'm going with three and one after that's after that's four four game stretch. Now, Alex, I know it's a true it's the only true home game of the four. But if I could get you as a Longhorn fan to sign up right now for three and one, and the loss is Georgia, don't you do it immediately? Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it as a as, as a as a fan because I work in a professional capacity covering the team. But no, I understand. If, if, I understand. If you're asking me to put myself in the mind of a fan. In the fan um, mindset, I'm gonna guarantee you three and one. I'm guaranteeing you're gonna beat OU in Dallas. I'm guaranteeing you're winning in Fayetteville. I'm guaranteeing you're winning at Kyle Field. Oh, yeah, yeah. You take the law. Yeah, you take. Yeah, okay. as as a as as Sam Ellinger once Sam Ellinger once said, "Take the loss." You know what? <laughs> yeah, you, right. You're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna take the loss. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, but um, but uh, I I it, because I think that, that means. If you get through that and you look at the rest of the remaining schedule, Texas is has a chance to have a be a one loss or possibly a two loss team, just depending on how Michigan, you mm -hmm. know, bounces back with the whole. I mean, and Michigan's got a whole reloading scenario of their own that we'll have all summer and fall camp to talk about. No doubt. Yeah, you're right. All right, uh, and of course, remember Oklahoma, Georgia, back to back on that schedule, and Arkansas and A and M are three weeks up, within a three week period. Those two games. It's going to be interesting to see how Texas handles all that. Speaking of handling it, Alex, the uh, basketball tournament is at the Sweet Sixteen level. Starts tomorrow. Right now, you'll take South Carolina on the women's side, and the 15 teams not named UConn on the men's side. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't watch much. Look, man, here's the thing. I can be a fan of the of, of, of the Texas women's basketball team, right? Mm -hmm. I went to the game. I can be a fan of those guys. I don't cover them. Absolutely. I, 
I, I love those guys, man. I love number 35. I love number 23. I love number 10 from, from Westlake. She, she, she hustles like no other. Um, I just, I think that's an, I think that's an awesome team, man. Great coach. So I, I haven't seen South Carolina or South Carolina, just so much better. I mean, are they just, uh, like, they're so going, I mean, they're, they are undefeated. A lot of people think they may be the favorite. There's good teams on the women's side, though, but they they seem to be everybody's favorite right now. I I would take the 15 teams not named UConn on the men's side because I think even Houston might have a decent chance versus UConn, and I just take the field and hope that anything weird happens. There you I go. Here's, the, here's what you can do, Alex. Since you just said you went to the game and you're going to go fan style, just lean into you think Vic Schaefer and that crew can win it all and then just sell. That's all you have to do. Yeah, I'll sell. There you go, right? Yeah, easy enough. Hey, they're gonna easy be enough. they're gonna be a tough out now. They will be a tough out. Uh before we get out of here, I'll set that match up in case you you missed it. But where you can check the Texas women's game, you're gonna need to stay up a little late for it. But that one's gonna be interesting to watch. All right, Alex. Uh the last two do involve birthdays today. Let's see what you do with it. Today is Quentin Tarantino's birthday. Your Mount Rushmore of Quentin Tarantino movies includes a Kill Bill movie. Fire no. So hold on. Let me just let, let me make sure. Will we sell it instantly? Yeah, but just let me make I'll, I'll tell you. So a, a Mount Rushmore is four, right? Mount Rushmore would be four. Are you a big Quentin Tarantino fan? Yes. So mine okay. would be um is is it ones that let's go direct Quentin Tarantino directed movies, which I think there are basically 10 of them, right? 10 or 11, 12 now, something like that. Okay. Well, I know that. Okay, well, Pulp Fiction is the is like the George Washington, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Res Reservoir Dogs. That has always been one of my. That's always been my favorite. I put it on there. Yep. Is Inglorious Bastards? It's a damn good movie. The damn good movie. I think some people would put that on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. God. What else you like? I, you put I'm Django on the Mount Rushmore. I'm just trying. I'm trying to think. He didn't do the usual suspects, did he? That is not Tarantino. He did Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was the last one that I think the last massive one that came out. Did he do Jackie Brown? Yes, that's Quentin. All right. That's it. That, that's that's on it. there too. Okay. Yep. There that's it is. Okay. Too. So neither of the Kill Bills is going to make the Mount Rushmore for, uh, for Alex. And finally, Alex, it is hotter than time. Here we go. Buy or sell number five. Fergie and Mariah Carey share a birthday today. Prime on Prime. Mariah, hotter than Fergie. Who's Fergie again? Fergie of the Black Eyed Peas. Fergie of the Black. Let me just look. I, I don't know who that is. Oh, Fergie, I love Black. that you're having to search Fergie. This Eyed is so Peas. good for you. You're getting a lot of points by having to search because that means if if you know if your wife's watching, she knows. Oh, he has no idea who Fergie is. Fergie the Black. Oh well, she's not. She's not a. She's not a. Not a not, not a bad looking woman. Yo, here's a picture with her with Pete Pete Diddy. Wonder what she has to say about hey, that. Hey, see, there you um, go. I'm trying to find like a pro okay, and Mariah Care. Oh gosh, I. Th mm -hmm. so let me look at Mariah Carey again. Just there we go. Time. See, we got a battle going on here. We got a man's game going on here. <laughs> He's trying to figure it out. Oh gosh, you forget you forget Mariah Carey. We got a Mariah vote. We got a uh, oh this this is uh, okay look it's I uh, think I got I mean dude Sunny Stone and Mariah I, Sunny I, I mean it. that's a wom a woman's perspective says, so you're saying uh, this that this is when they were like young stars right like we're not talking about them today whatever you consider the prime if you consider the oh, prime, prime. To be today oh, okay that, whatever no, the man. prime is for some me. of these photos of Mariah I'm I'm going I'm going with 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 Mariah Carey over for okay he's buying he's buying Mariah Carey yeah those two at their absolute tip top best yeah they're incredible and happy birthday to both of them today Mariah and Fergie share a birthday that's how we do buy or sell well done on alex's part to jump in he didn't even know he was doing the show when he woke up today and he just did buy or sell. I, I didn't know i was gonna do the show 20 minutes beforehand <laughs> How about that? he stepped in for for the sick jeff ketchum and he knocked it out of the park he answered questions he talked about his bird's eye view or i don't know if it's a bird's eye but his eyewitness account of practice today um so if you haven't checked out 
the practice reports on orangebloods.com. Let me throw you a QR code. You get Alex's pra early practice thoughts, Anwar's early practice thoughts, Jason Sukamel's practice thoughts, plus all the pictures he took. That picture gallery is up. And tomorrow night, it'll be another war room night at orangebloods.com. Anything uh, else specific, Alex, we need to mention orangebloods.com wise for you. Anything else you're uh, working on this week? No, I just know, man. I'm just, I'm taking it as it comes right now. If there's stuff that comes up that needs to be reported on, we'll report on it. And um, yeah, obviously some, uh, you know, some, some recruiting stuff, you know, some interesting recruiting stuff going on right now, some events and some camps and Jason has all that stuff covered. So if you're into the hearing about the team or you're into hearing about the new guys that could be coming to the team in Orange Bloods has you completely covered and the community at Orange Bloods. You can go there and you could argue over Mariah Carey versus Fergie all day long <laughs> with a bunch that, of like-minded people. Right. That's what those message <laughs> board, boards are for. Uh, yes. And I do think, um, Alex, your, your discussion about the offensive line, I know how much you love uh, to talk about line of scrimmage stuff, but, the, the the story you started with today is going to be one to follow uh, Connor Yamuzalo, how that looks in turn, you know, how they're presenting that offensive line is interesting. So keep an eye on that one um, because, you know, Alex will be doing that. Speaking of Alex, Anwar and Alex will be back tomorrow with the old fashioned at 9 a.m. So check that out. And coming up this afternoon, uh, we may have a recruiting show. Catch again is resting up the rest of the day. If Jason Sukumel can jump in, we'll do a recruiting show. Also, get some of his thoughts on practice um and we'll do that also an outsiders tonight at 8 30 uh chance Bo, myself maybe jeff ketchum but then again jeff needs his rest so we might we might just be talking some football i want to get those guys thoughts on uh on a couple things in terms of these nfl rule changes that are going on um and i know there's, there's they're gonna have some opinions on that uh alex i appreciate you jumping in today man have a good rest of your day uh, everybody else, have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thanks to Specs for sponsoring the chat. Thanks to damn near 500 folks that are in there as we are wrapping up. That is Alex Dunlap. Again, hopefully Catch will be back tomorrow. He's going to try to get some rest and try to get well. If you're out there sick too, you get well uh, also. Have yourself a good Wednesday. Take care. We will talk to you soon. It's Orange Blood.